and let's get to the point. Ryan Thompson and I are uh, putting on a course in Las Vegas. What are the dates again, Brian? Six, seven, eight, right? September. I'd have to look at the calendar, but I think you're right. Al, let me go to uh, the six, Mikey's. seven, eight of September. And this is a uh, – you want to use the word innovative, unbeknownst, unprecedented, um, never seen before course. One of a yeah, one of a kind. How about the course itself. And uh, we're covering subjects that have never been taught in a formal setting like this all at one time. I imagine there's some stone classes. There's uh, maybe some wood classes and some rug classes and some tile classes and some grouting classes and all kind of dabble in this stuff. But our approach on this is that as carpet continues to shrink in our markets, people are putting in more and more tile and grout and vinyl and various forms of vinyl, various forms of tile, porcelain plank, all sorts of hard stuff. There's forms of wood. And as professional floor cleaners, we've got to learn how to deal with these things on a, on a grander scale. And I know all too well that most tile cleaners call themselves tile cleaners because they own a spinner, you know, a TH40 or a turbo hybrid, whatever you want to call it. And they might own a pole brush and they may have, you know, an acid and an alkaline cleaner. But not a whole lot more than that. As Brian are going to get into, when you want to get into bigger projects, you got to be able to offer a, a grander scope of, of services and learn how to do grout repair, silicone repair, caulking repair, polishing, honing, um, dealing with baseboards that are very problematic. Uh, and then that all leads to cleaning rugs in the home as well. So there's, uh, we're teaching this basically to, to, to get everybody on the same page and that in order to get these larger jobs, which a lot of the times, I think Brian, you'll agree with this. You're either prepping the house for sale or the, it's a new homeowner bought a new house and then focus on the small things. And, and uh, it's very much proven that when somebody's buying a house, all they're seeing, particularly the, the lady, is all they're seeing and thinking about is where are they going to put the furniture? Yeah. They're not looking at the details, the cracks in the grout and the, the separation between the bathtub and the tile and uh, the issues with the countertop. And all those little details that come later after they've lived there for a couple of days to a week or a couple of months, maybe. Yeah. Um, also, something I see over here a lot is houses being built on a sandy foundation that settle over time and everything starts popping apart. Grout lines, joint lines. So Brian and I both feel we both stay busy doing these fine repairs that uh, turn into very large ticket items, very large projects, not just, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But these are usually. Well, I, I was talking about that bid I gave yesterday, Brian, and that was that turned into a twenty-four hundred dollar job. Yep, it'll be two days, right? Um, but not even full days, mm -hmm. and, uh, and all sorts of little little repairs. So uh, they, the the thing about that is they don't know until you tell them, until you point it out, because they're not used to having a contractor come in who's just a tile and grout cleaner. Or a carp I shouldn't say just, but that is a carpet cleaner or a tile and grout cleaner. And they've never had that pointed out to them before. Oh, look, your your joint at your backsplash to your countertop um, is cracked and is actually missing grout. Mm -hmm. Or you've got a crack through this uh, this tile over here that's, um, you know, um, probably going to end up getting worse if you don't at least address it now. So. I think the reason why a lot of guys aren't capitalizing on it, it first of all, they don't quite know how to, to explain it to the customer what the repair could be or should be. Um, and, and the customer's not aware that that service is available readily through a good contractor. 
Yeah, a lot of people aren't even aware of these things can be fixed. End up getting worse if you don't at least address it now. So yeah, yeah. I think the reason why a lot of guys aren't capitalizing on it, first of all, they don't quite know how to to explain it to the customer what the repair. Uh, and and the customer is not aware that that service is available readily through a good contractor. Mm -hmm. Hey Brian, why don't we back up for a second? Yeah, I think the reason why. Oh, I'm getting the feedback. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fixed that. Okay, why don't we back that. up a second first and tell us a little bit about your history in the in the hard surface world? Okay. Um, for those who don't know me, I started back in 2005 with a company called Turbo Force International back when we had the affectionate black bowl on a stick before the turbo hybrid actually came out the blue and um, worked for uh, Turbo Force selling turbos into the industry uh, with Mark Markovich and, and George Burns being the primary owner. And uh, then George decided to develop a business opportunity called the Master's Touch, which I'm sure um, a few guys out there recognize that one. So I went and got all my certifications, went and got some public speaking classes, felt confident enough to then become a trainer for the Master's Touch, ended up being the master train lead trainer there for a number of years, left there, went to work for U.S. Products as a hard surface instructor, uh, back to the master's touch and then, uh, Bill Bruders and uh, Mike Roden, um, approached me about joining legend brands. Um, so I sold, went into legend brands, sold the first Sapphire truck mounts into the industry. Back then we only had two, a 270 and, uh, a 370. Uh, those were the only two truck mounts at that time. Um, and then, uh, started the hard surface, uh, training program with them was doing that for nine years then three years ago I went out on my own to start a stone restoration company with a gentleman here in Phoenix that had been cleaning carpet for 30 years so we've got a stone business and carpet cleaning business in uh, northwest yeah. Phoenix and um, I'm back and to actually teaching again doing contract teaching with um, distributors, professional carpet cleaning distributors throughout the U.S. and Canada. That's the gist. Boy, you, you've uh, you got quite a bit more of an illustrious, uh, well-known tile and grout hard surface career than I have. I, I've just been doing it for a long time. I was one of the early adapters to getting a spinner in, what was that, 2000, 2001? Yeah. When they first mm -hmm. came out. Uh, we've been blessed or cursed, depending on how you want to look at it, with a a very high-end market that is extremely obsessed with grout color and condition. And uh, I've told this story many times, but during the whole recession, 2008 and nine, uh, had we not turned on the TV or read a newspaper, we would have never known. We still had people paying us ridiculous amounts of money to uh, recolor, or replace their grout to match the color of their dog's eyes or their new curtains or whatever. And working for very demanding customers, you know, I've learned, my techs have learned to do these real fine detail type fixes. And we've seen where, it, you know, it leads to these incredible projects where you are there for days and you're, you're fixing all the showers and all the bathroom counters and the kitchen counters and areas around baseboards and fireplaces and outside uh, kitchenette kind of things or barbecues and um, it's stuff that handymen aren't very good at. And Brian and I and anybody who's been doing this for a while have seen what handymen do or husbands do on the first or second attempt trying to do recocking and grout repair. And like anything else in this industry, you know, practice makes perfect. So Brian and I have been talking about doing this for a while, and we had an opportunity to sit down with um, Kevin Pearson, who's the uh, chairman of the board of the IICRC, and talk to him about this. Um, he got to see Brian at work doing some demos at the uh, Scott Stills Mikey Fest. Scott Stills event, and you could see it clicking in uh, Kevin's head. So he asked us to write up a you know a uh, premise basically of what the class would be about. And in a nutshell, what it is, is going to be a three day course at the the 
GRC or, or Global Resource Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and they have a great big classroom there and some uh, enclosed outside areas that will be cool or moderately cool in September. And we're going to set up all kinds of training and demo and practice areas to very realistically and using the same types of materials, tile on tile and stone and wood and uh, whatever, formica and steel counter or steel sinks and porcelain sinks, all that stuff, but create work areas where the students can practice not only putting these materials in the silicones and epoxies and flexible grouts and chinking and all these things, but also just as importantly, taking them out because it's, you know, normally uh, the homeowner is going to ask you if you can fix typically a, you know, a moldy rotted cracked caulking lines is, you know, the generic term or it's a grout line between either the floor and the wall in the shower or between the tub and the wall in the shower. And there's all sorts of ways, you know, a multitude of tools that we'll be showing and letting you practice with to remove the incredible amount of, of variable products that you'll find in there. And I've done jobs where I've literally counted five different materials that I'm moving out or, you know, removing from that joint before I finally get to nothing. You know, you'll have a layer of latex and silicone and grout, and another layer of uh, some other flexible material. And of course, there's mold in between all of them. And it be, you know, just becomes this disgusting lasagna, basically, that you got to get all that out of there. You got to sanitize those areas, let them dry for a couple of days. And then you got to skillfully put it back in. And when you're charging the kind of money that we are, you got to have an artistic approach and, and that's where you got to decide if you're the right person for this class. Do you have that attention to detail to do Absolutely. better than their husband or handyman does? Absolutely. If you know you can't and you, you know, and you're okay with caulking and just splattered all over the dang place. Um, and your van's a filthy mess and you know, <laughs> you should, you need a little bit of self-awareness to know that you can be able to do this. We, can we have, help? Yeah, Mike, that's a great point. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. That's a great sure. point. Uh, we have a our company motto is our attention to detail is to your advantage. Call Advantage Plus Carpet and Stone Care. That's a great point because especially if you're doing an SGA, super grout additive, grout line at a tub transition to a uh, textured travertine tile and you've got all those little nooks and crannies, well, you just can't just smush it up in there and say that looks good enough uh, because we we'll get easily on a tub surround pulling all that out and then putting new super grout additive in there which we'll show at uh, our training class we'll easily get four hundred dollars to do that and it'll take us you know maybe an hour an hour and a half and the reason why we charge that is because it's a permanent repair they're they most likely uh, you know in, in, in short of an earthquake, that stuff is so strong that it's not going to break loose again. So it's a premium service that you charge a premium price for. Yeah. And again, you, you have to do a little soul searching. And, you know, I, I do so many of these events, Mikey's Fest and whatever the experience and I've seen so many cleaners and, and I've worked for multi-truck companies and very, very few are those three percenter types where you're just almost borderline neurotic about the, the perfection of the finished product. So many people are just happy with so-so and it's not something they can really control. They either see it or they don't. And I watch guys cleaning on these YouTube videos and, and they're they're elated and their customers are like oh wow look how great it looks but i still see filthy carpet that's been streaked by a you know a wand that's not adjusted correctly right and when you're charging this kind of money and dealing with something that doesn't hide in the pile of the carpet or the side yeah. of the room that you're looking at or lighting when mm -hmm. when you're when you're fixing grout and caulking that's at sometimes eye level um people great can point. be extremely picky and deservedly so. So you got to know that that's that's in your system. 
your uh, your natural ability. And I know one of the guys that signed up is uh, Chandler Thompson. Mm-hmm. You watch Chandler's videos and you talk to him and you hang out with him. And I've cleaned alongside Chandler. You know that he is that uh, ADD type. He's an absolute perfectionist that could clean a home with a toothpick and a, and a Q-tip, you know, and detail it out. So, well, I, I want my customer to be detail oriented and really examine my work because I want them to see the quality of work that I do, the yeah. attention to detail I put in there. Because once they're confident that I have that in my DNA, if you will, you know, that that's the kind of work I do, then they're more apt to trust you with other areas of their home that can really increase your ticket, like uh, resetting a seam on a granite countertop or just, you know, basic polishing on a granite countertop. If they know that you're a detail oriented, do quality work, they're going to trust you in those other areas in the home. But if you're just a hack, they're going to see it and say, no, nah, uh, time to move on. Yeah. And how you present yourself, how you talk about the, yeah. the various products in their home, your knowledge. And, and just like area rug cleaning, you don't need to know the exact country of origin or the name of that 12 year old girl who wove that rug together, but you should have a basic understanding to know, you know, the, somewhat of the, the region that it came from, um, it's, it's age, it's content. And, you know, when you're dealing with all these various stones and some of the, you know, the marbles and granites can get really confusing, but you should know the difference between marble, granite, limestone, travertine, yep. soapstone, slate, flagstone. Yep. And if you don't know, and, you, you know, and a lot of people won't know when you're first getting into this, at least refer to it as natural stone. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good know, starting point. <laughs> if you call somebody's porcelain, you know, granite or stone, <laughs> <laughs> and they know it's porcelain. Just yeah. pack up your bags and skadoodle. You know they, they ain't gonna hire you to do anything. Right. And yep. until you can ID those things, and it's not tough. We'll have samples no. all that stuff in the class. But hopefully, I would imagine that most of the people coming to this class are already at that level where they can ID most of it. Yeah. You you mentioned individual workstations. Would you like for me to read off the bullet points um, that you have on the Mikey's uh, Fest events page? so that they can know what we might be covering? You bet. Fire away. Okay. All right. So here we go. Okay. Wood floor cleaning, low moisture and extraction methods. Vinyl floor cleaning, plank and sheet. Stone and ceramic floor tile cleaning. These are all individual bullet points of stations that we'll have that you can do hands-on learning on with Mike and I instructing you personally. Stone countertop cleaning, restoration, chip repair, and sealing. And if you're not doing that, you are missing out on a huge amount of money. And I'm not talking about surface resurfacing granite. I'm talking about reconditioning and doing simple chip repair and sealing. I've got one coming up at the end of the week. It's 500 bucks and it's going to take me two and a half hours to do. It's a great service. Grout repair, fortifying, uh, excuse me, grout repair, fortified epoxy and flexible products, color matching techniques. That's a really that what we were just talking about, a really important um, service. Backsplash sink and baseboard joint removal and repair. That's the grout we're talking about there. Grout color sealing application removal. Topical floor finishes application removal. On-site area rug cleaning. That's a hell of a lot to learn. But that where else are you going to learn that in two days? And we'll, huh. and we'll you know, I mean... It's three days, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually three days. And so that's the, that's the good thing about it is you're going to get a hands-on experience with two guys that have been doing it a long time and then actually put it into practice at the Ronald McDonald House in Vegas. Can't so beat yeah, that. At, you're going to learn all these tricks, and then at that Ronald McDonald House, you're going to – we're not going to deal with the carpet or upholstery. We're going to have some locals and other people that are in town for the experience deal with that, that side of the house. But our team will be in charge of the kitchen and dining room where there's some missing grout, crack grout. There's uh, from the last event we had there, there was some color seal applied uh, properly and improperly. That some of it was applied over uh, grout that was just sealed. So we know it's failing there. And if you don't have experience dealing with removing color seal and or topical sealers, VCT wax kind of stuff, 
Um, we're going to go over that immensely, but if you don't have experience in it, you probably haven't been cleaning tile and grout very long. Uh, inevitably, you're going to walk into a job where that – the, the topical seal was hiding under a layer of dirt. And as you start to remove that first layer of dirt and the first layer of topical sealer, um, it's a real ugly uh, realization that you're going to be spending the rest of your day, potentially the rest of your week there, fixing that situation. If you run your company with any kind of morals where you, you're kind of on the hook, it was your fault for not noticing that. And I fully believe you should fix it. That's hey man. Am I am I glad to hear you say that, Mike? Um, I think too many guys. That's exactly our company policy as well. We, once we quote a job, we don't change that for any reason, especially if we miss something, unless the customer asks us to do something else that we didn't quote. Because that that right there is an ethic that's I think missing in our industry. And that really solidifies your brand name and your company as a company that can be trusted. That's a great point. Glad you said that. Yeah, and you may luck out. The customer may be home and see you realize it's not on there. And if, you know, if you're a good communicator, they may take pity on you and say, oh, geez, you know, that's not your fault. Yeah. Uh, how long is that going to take? And, you know, how can I make it fair for you to remove that? And, they may, they may realize they made the mistake. They may have applied it themselves. Um, that's sometimes the case. Often it's, though, it's the prior homeowner uh, or handyman that just went to, the, went to the Home Depot and bought the first container or something that said sealer on it and not realizing that, you know, you have two families of sealer, penetra penetrative and mm -hmm. topical. Topical, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go into the techniques of IDing those products and removing them and reapplying them because there are still are plenty of floors that do better with a, a topical seal, whether it's water-based, solvent-based, what have you. And while we, while Brian and I both know that color sealing is uh, highly controversial and oftentimes oversold by the franchises because it's kind of easy to sell and somewhat easy to apply. Uh, it is not the end all to end all, and you'll run into a lot of failed applications on that stuff. And getting it off is sometimes very easy. There's a lot of junky Bed Bath and Beyond type products that are nothing more than uh, leftover. Um, what was the stuff you use on the type typewriters? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah that. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah, 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 yeah like white out, white out, white out. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, they saw it. And it's the same little applicator, a little brush, a little nub. That's true. They do. <laughs> those, those tend to come right off with any kind of yeah. high pH and high pressure. As and seen, stuff, you got to use, you know, gel based lacquer strippers to get yeah, out. As seen on TV. As seen on TV. So we're going to dabble in all of that. Um, and then a lot, a lot of time with a caulking gun because that's, there's a, a technique to not only squirting it into those gaps, but laying out a nice smooth bead that doesn't extend beyond the, the opening. And that's where a lot of guys blow it. Almost every homeowner, handyman, you know, spread the product onto the wall. And a lot of times they don't see if it's white on white or they're using mm -hmm. clear, they don't realize it. And that inevitably leads to a mold situation as that thin skin, that swiping yeah. up the wall or the platform on the tub or the wall or the floor uh, lifts from scrubbing or flexing or whatnot. Yeah. And now you got mold growing underneath, making it painfully obvious that it's there, but there's, there's techniques to not leave it there. So we're going to talk about that. And then all the different removal techniques, all the different tools, which can vary from, you know, your fingernail, your pocket knife, a razor blade, various types of razor blades. Uh, I use, I use a really thin, uh, you remember the old, uh, uh, super thin, small craftsman flat blade screwdriver, like you'd use for uh, like little quarter inch screws. Yeah. I, I I file that thing down, and that's one of the best tools that I use for removing grout on backsplashes. Just digs right in there, and it's uh, yeah, it's yeah, pretty good. That. Yeah, so we'll both end up learning stuff inevitably on this. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have buckets and buckets of cool tools and, and tell you where to get these things. And then that 
Yeah, that's 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 just the first day. Yeah. Second day, we're going to bring in some uh, guest presenters, speakers that are all well versed in their own little niches on this stuff. Uh, one of which is Reg Rogers from Carpet Cleaner America, the CRB company. And we're going to be showing you how to use CRBs to not only scrub stone floors, but also do some higher end uh, rug cleaning in the home that when you're dealing with bleeders and shrinkers where uh, we see it a ton. And the, and the higher end you go, the more you're going to see this with, real particular customers that don't want their $150,000 rug leaving the house. Cool. They don't want it sent out. It's not that dirty. There might be a grand piano or, you know, something sitting on there. They want it freshened up, smelling better and looking brighter. And if you can't figure it out, they'll find someone else that can. And that's where CRB and Compound does wonders. Uh, there's virtually no moisture to it. It absolutely brightens them up and leaves them smelling kind of, you, fresh. you just said something there, Mike, really important. You said, or they'll find somebody else that can. When you okay. can become a one-stop shop for your customer, do the yeah. caulking in the tub, re, yeah. re, re-grout the, the shower pan, do the backsplash, you, you cement yourself with that customer like no other way, and you've got a loyal customer that becomes a cheerleader for you, too. If mm-hmm. you're allowing somebody else to come in and do those specialty repairs, guess what? They might polish stone. They might do area rugs. They might do everything you do. And now they're going to become the one-stop shop for them. You need to learn these special techniques and, and special services. Add to your service menu, up your ticket, and secure your customer, loyal customer. Don't let the other guy come in. Yeah. Do something you can. That's getting more and more important. Yeah. As homes go multi-surface, you know, it's not just carpet through the, the bedrooms, living room hall, and maybe some vinyl or tile in the kitchen. Now you're seeing every room's a different type of product. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of you guys on some of my Facebook page or Mikey's board saw that I went to a real nice tile and granite counter fabricator day. And a guy like me, I could walk through there for hours. It was like going to the, the finest art museum. Oh, yeah. Know, out on all these different surfaces for floors and walls and counters and it'd be it'd be so hard to like put one throughout the house yeah you, know, you want to whatever the you know have them meandering throughout mm-hmm. but you got to learn to deal with all these things and uh lvp as these things i mean every time i go to D- home depot and they're making a killing on this stuff they have another better thicker more durable lvp mm-hmm and LVP, if you know, luxury vinyl plank. And even that stuff needs to be professionally cleaned, especially if they're using Swiffers and the, the little robot guy and string mops, sponge mops. They are filling the simulated uh, wood grain with crud that's going to eventually, inevitably, get full of a, a gunk that they're not going to be able to get out. Heck, it's hard mm-hmm. enough for us to get out. We had a heck of a time cleaning some of this stuff at the Ron McDonald house in uh, San Diego two weeks ago. And a lot of times it ends up with you on your knees and a very fine wire toothbrush digging this stuff out of certain areas. So let me go back to that list of our speakers. We were just dealing with Reg there, Carpet Clear America. So again, uh, using the CRBs on stone and rugs. Next up, Mark Sager, Harvard Chemical. You all know Mark, and he's got um, two great products that we're going to use in this class. One is his uh, Sager Super Seal, which is just extremely versatile, very easy to use. And when you're dealing with a more competitive market share where pennies count, not the Mm -hmm. super high end where they'll pay you five bucks a foot to to seal floors. If if you shake your head yes and say, yes, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Vanderbilt, this is the stuff you want. (laughs) Okay, you to go. But when you're dealing with, you know, track homes and condos and whatnot, they're, they're going to be thrifty and they may only have 20, 30 cents, you know, 50 cents if you're lucky to, to seal the grout. Uh, so you better have an economical, easy to use sealer that you can do in 20 minutes of a whole house. And that's where the Sager Super Seal comes into effect. And that also works on carpet and rugs and everything else. But it's a, it's a lower solids uh, product that's yet very effective. Yeah, it's a good product. We're we're starting to use it. 
uh, like you say, on those uh, Econo jobs. And what I like about it is it's uh, um, apply and we do a mass application with a squeegee and walk away. It's yeah. simple, quick, easy. You don't have to worry about residuals, creating smudges and, and uh, calling, having callbacks. And it, it, I'll tell you, we, uh, we found the coverage is excellent on it, too. Being a solvent base, it really does uh, apply easily and spreads out quickly. And, and then, of course, flashes off quick enough to where you don't have footprints or anything else in there. Mm -hmm. So Mark will be there to uh, show that. We'll, we'll seal some areas. And don't forget the, the, the IICRC GRC, Global Resource Center, uh, was wisely built with a menagerie of flooring and surface types. They knew eventually that they would be classes held there like this. So there's all sorts of areas there for us to practice on. Uh, then Mark's also got a terrific, uh, very high alkaline grout blaster type product in his Tsunami. And uh, that's a fantastic product for grout and travertine, especially when you want to leave them with a honed surface. Yeah. Uh, TRS, Trinity Renewal Systems. Uh, we'll be sending more than likely Charles Haberlin out. And another great product for not only polishing stone, an OP machine is much quicker about polishing stone than a standard 175, but also a, a great scrubber for LVP, wood, carpet, what have you. Um, and then, uh, geez, for this class, I'd like to call them, what they call it on the love boat when they had a real fancy guest star. <laughs> uh -huh. star or whatever. But, yeah. Uh, Rob Fairfield from Stone Pro. And yeah, yeah. Rob is, Rob teaches a, uh, a boot camp probably four times a year in Anaheim where it's really designed for carpet cleaners to learn how to polish do basic polishing on uh, all stone surfaces. And it, it goes very much hand in hand with this class. It doesn't really matter which one you do first or after, but it's all just a, a terrific hands-on knowledge to deal with various hard surface issues. And so yeah, Rob will be there to focus more on the, uh, the stone polishing, whether it's real basic hand removal, rather than using a Makita or floor polisher, of some water rings on a marble or limestone counter in the bathroom, uh, getting soap scum and, and hard water deposits off of kitchen counters, which is probably the number one way to break the ice and get into letting the customer know that you are you do offer all these surfaces because it's so quick and easy to do. And almost every house in America does have that white crusty buildup around their fixtures, at least yep. one, of the, one of the sinks in the house. And then lastly, uh, Justin Pit, I'm not even sure how to say his last name, Pitanato from Super Grout Additive. And Super Grout Additive is a two parts slow curing epoxy that you can mix with any color and any type of grout. So you can do all kinds of creative fixes. And most people, most tile setters, most handyman only know about the standard silicones and, and latex cocks that you can get at, at hardware stores. So you got, well, man, you want your choice of white, almond, clear. Um, there a couple of them have silver, black, or, or brown. And that's it. And there's so many cases where people want something to match, again, the color of their dog's eyes or match one of the quartz structures in the granite. And now you can bring in some grout sample charts and let them pick from, you know, 30, 40, 50 different shades of whatever, avocado or sandstone, or mm -hmm. there's so many earth tones in those kits that are readily available. Um, and the super grout is just a terrific way to get really detailed. And boy, when you tell people they can pick any color, they're like, people that have dealt with it before are just shocked. And then uh, a product I was telling Brian about just yesterday, there's a, an online company that you can order custom color RTV type silicones. Right? 100, yeah, 100% silicone. 100% and any, any color that grout is offered in. So we're going to go into using that product, how to get that. And then again, we're going to be taking all our knowledge over to the Ronald McDonald house on the third day and fixing their, their, uh, granite counter to backsplash 
that last time I filled it in, it was all cracked and missing. I removed a failed latex product out of there and had to come up with some makeshift backer rod. And we're going to, whether it's, whether it's failed or not, we're going to remove that and redo it with the uh, super grout additive this time, which we didn't have. We didn't come prepared last time. We didn't know that was going on. Um, I think there's some bottom mount sink to counter issues. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the color seal issues and, and crack grout and whatnot. So all sorts of things to work on there, as well as the carpet and upholstery, if you guys want to dabble in that stuff. So three very long days, jam-packed, full of uh, very hands-on information. And then the next day, you get to relax if you want to stay in town and go to the experience and enjoy that big swap meet and more education on it. On and, and what about the raffle? And there's a raffle involved, too? Yeah, we are. Brian and I are going to uh, work at the IICRC booth at the experience. And many of you have probably seen one of the raffles I used to do. I did a lot of them with like, a, you know, basically the local chapter of the SPCA or, you know, some kind of an animal rescue. We did something with uh, Barry Costa's L&L Society where, boy, that one, I think we raised 20 grand on that one. But basically we get prizes donated from most, if not all the vendors at the experience and they donate some very hefty prizes. A lot of them are many of the thousands of value. And you're able to see, you get a couple of free tickets with admission, and then you're able to buy more tickets. And uh, without fail, there's always a couple of players that show up ready to gamble. They'll spend a couple thousand dollars on tickets and then win many, many thousands of dollars in prizes. And what they do with those, you know, so they keep some of them, they, Sometimes they sell them right there on the spot, and other times you'll see them on Craigslist in a day or two. But uh, make it, it's a real fun deal where the, each, each prize has a clear container. That, so over the three-day show, you can see what prizes are more popular, and you can come in at the last minute and buy you know, a few more tickets than what's currently in there and stack the odds to win you know, some of the less popular prizes, which you, who knows, you may want them if they're just not popular to the masses. But we usually have, you know, the latest, greatest swivel wands and rotor extractors and portables and passes to seminars and classes and, and uh, tons of chemistry and all sorts of things. We usually have at least 40 different prizes going. So Brian and I will be uh, kind of heading that off. And by the end of that week, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> Sounds exhausting already just talking about it. But uh, I'm not sure. This is a, a kind of a unique program here. Uh oh, Brian lost audio. Huh. That's weird, Brian, because I can hear you making noise over there. And I didn't hit any buttons or anything. And we're under the time limit. Brian, I would check it on your end. I didn't. I didn't hit anything, so that's kind of weird. Uh, I see where Brian typed in. He lost audio, so uh, now we're under the time limit. Brian, I'm going to check it on your end. I didn't do it there. I didn't hit anything, so okay, that's kind of weird. Doing something goofy. The feedback is uh, I see here. where Brian typed in. He lost audio, so now we're under the time limit. Brian, what are you doing over there? you got to turn Brian, your sound off. On your end. I didn't I didn't hit anything. So that's kind of weird. Doing something goofy. The feedback is sound. I see where Brian typed in. He lost audio. So now kill the sound, Brian. Brian, what are you doing over there? You got to turn your sound off. I just got it back. I'm right here. Uh oh. So Brian's gone. <laughs> but if any of you have any questions, if you can type them down below, and Brian's back. Um. Type them here. Otherwise, uh, we've been on here for an hour and a half trying to get this dang program to work. This one's new to me. And let me see. Brought Lamine. Looks like Lamine is asking a question here. Boy, this is not as friendly as uh, Facebook Live by any means. Yeah, what'd you do? Yeah. 
Well, it shows 48 comments, <laughs> and I'm only seeing five of them. Can you uh, can you see any of those? Uh, wow. Yeah, but this thing is showing 48 comments, and uh, lucky me, I can't see any of them. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, wow. I'm not really digging this program, that's for sure. It's a pain in the butt. Um, yeah, you go talk while I'm trying to figure this dang thing out. All right. Somehow I found this. Um, a lot of comments, not, not a whole lot of questions here. Can you hear me, Brian? Um, all right. Somehow I found this. Um, a lot of comments, not, not a whole lot of uh, questions here. I got way too many of these videos, player playing uh, going on uh, yeah i turned that off but uh yeah she chandler commenting that he can't wait to come to the event that's why he's waiting for this he's been calling me a lot lately with, with these same kind of projects and he's you know chandler deals with a very high-end tennis ladies type you know client base that love this kind of detail oriented stuff so it's just perfect for him uh this service for that you wouldn't you know you'd think well maybe they're not going to be able to afford it well let me tell you something if they get oh, sick and tired of looking at it and that crack and they've asked their cus their husband to fix the crack grout on the backsplash and he doesn't do it um I, I, there's a lot of customers that appreciate this service it isn't just high end but yeah the high end yeah. ones do like that yeah I should correct that. You know, like that job I told you I did the other day. I'm starting this Friday. Um, absolutely middle, you know, middle class is right, two, exactly. you know, two working, two working class parents and, uh, you know, 1900 square foot track house. There you go. I'm going to replace all the grout and flexible grout that they put around their tubs around their walk-in shower, um, five different countertops. Wow. Clean all the tile and grout, seal it. It was never sealed when it was all put in just three years ago. Mm. Uh, clean three bedrooms of carpet, clean uh, an area rug on location. So 
virtually everything we're, we're talking about on this, um, on this course is what I'm going to be doing at this house. See, and, and the thing about that is when, when their neighbors come over, people oh, yeah. like to talk about what they've got done. Yeah. And as soon and and as soon as they start mentioning specialty service like that, like he did my backsplash growl, he did yeah. my shagra, that's going to turn into more work. There's just no doubt because everybody's track home or high end home has these issues eventually because the products that they use or the application by the contractor uh, usually fails within about three to five years, mm -hmm. especially on a new track. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, we got a you know multiple multiple housing tracks going in the valley here as California mm -hmm. continues to run people out of there, and they're all seem to be coming here, and they're building houses where they probably shouldn't on very sandy subsoil, mm -hmm. and uh, all these houses are sinking in and uh, creating all kinds of work for a guy like me. That's great. Uh, it just that sucks for them. Good for you. Yeah. 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 Uh, channel ask but this is a high-end service yeah you're i mean this is definitely going to be more you're gonna you'll get more steady work out of the the tennis club set channeler that where people have that uh what do you call it discretionary income to spend multiples of thousands correcting grout color that went wrong or cracks or whatnot but it's, you're your everyday customers too that that where the hubby can't figure it out or the handyman mm -hmm. screwed it up uh well, and when you let them know that you do it, uh, yeah, you'll get plenty of work out of, out of Mr. and Mrs. Well, middle class. The the last um, pan shower pan that I pulled all the grout out of and put SGA in, we ended up getting an additional. We polished the walls. We don't polish the floor. We're not going to make that slippery, the pan. But, but we polished the walls. They were travertine. It was a travertine shower. So just by doing the SGA, we were able to add on another eh, $400, $500 to polish every wall in her shower. Mm -hmm. It was a large walk-in. So we wouldn't have got that had we not known how to do SGA in the shower pan. Yeah. Uh, Josh Ryan, you're saying, yeah, the stuff in Florida. Yeah, if you're in Florida, uh, Phoenix, Vegas, any of these areas where almost Florida. everybody, you know, yanked their carpet out. They may have kept it in the master bedroom. Uh God, you better be prepared and skilled in all this stuff because you ain't, you ain't going to make a living just cleaning those three bedrooms anymore. You got to be able to deal with the rest of that house. And that, you know, that message needs to be conveyed on your website and Facebook pages and all that, that you do do those. I, I uh, recently did a little Facebook campaign and all I did was show fixed grout joints and, and uh, silicone and whatnot. And no mention of carpet, heck, no mention of even grout cleaning just repair stuff and i put i don't know six seven pictures of some really good before and after stuff and if you go on my uh carson valley carpet cleaning facebook page you'll probably see that uh that little menagerie of photos and i had you know tile and stone fabricators responding to that and a lot of people say oh boy i'm gonna bookmark this i'm gonna need this done and yeah, did some estimates on it, a couple jobs, and a job I'm starting tomorrow or Friday is it came off of that ad. Um, but yeah, you got to let people know you do it. And uh, a big part of our course will be on, on how to market yourself doing this and how to uh, deal with the customers up front, how to get photographs. Because just like showers and wood floors, if you once you put that on your website, you're going to be, you could potentially be doing a whole lot of free estimates running around. And people think you're charging merry made prices, which unfortunately is something you run into because when you just say I clean showers, you right. know, just the pairing paying merry made or something, you know, the equivalent fifty bucks, you know, and uh, our our minimum charge to look at the showers three hundred bucks, and that's usually the kind of shower that I only have to walk into. I can take a pressure washing gun, blast it from outside, wipe it down, detail a little bit, mm -hmm. put a sealer on there, and off you go. But many showers, you know, or three, four, five, six times that price because you're in there for days potentially. And it, Absolutely. it's not necessarily the funnest work. It's a lot like car detailing. You're on your hands and knees and they go for like me, six foot six. You know, when I got to clean down there on that floor to wall joint, I'm going to make sure I get paid for that torture. Uh, but, you know, the, another area you mentioned briefly that's really 
is a big plus when we show the customer um, how effective it is, is removing the hard water scale around the faucets in the bathrooms, on the vanities, and in the kitchen on the granite. Mm -hmm. Because they'll sit there and they'll wipe that or they'll put a little vinegar. And, you know, once it, and you mentioned Phoenix, Florida, Vegas, man, those, we all have terrible hard water scale. And um, we, we get, we add just a little bit more, not a lot, but it depends on how bad it is. But when you're, when you can remove that scale and then polish around those fixtures and make it, make it blend in with the rest of the countertop. And then put a you know a nice uh, final touch conditioner on there that makes it velvet smooth. Uh, they are so impressed because they haven't seen it like that in years, and uh, you're bringing it back to life, so to speak. You know, we we our tag is we we'll make you fall back in love with your stone because they loved it when they got it, but then it developed developed the crusties and everything else, and uh, they hate it until until you show them how to remove that, and then better yet, how to maintain it. That's what they, my customers really appreciate me educating them on how to maintain it. But knowing that I'm going to be back in that house once a year, when you start that type of service, at least on the countertop reconditioning, not resurfacing, but reconditioning, we, we're finished with the countertop and we say, okay, Mrs. Jones, we, uh, to keep this looking great, we'd like to be back in here in another 12 to 14 months. How does Wednesday, you know, 2021 sound of February and they're, they're all over it because once they see how beautiful that granite can look through some basic cleaning and polishing, paste polishing techniques, you can set them up on a, on a annual basis. No problem. Some will even do it biannually. And our normal charge for a kitchen is between four fifty and $500 for a standard L shape uh, mm -hmm. kitchen with about a 13 by, you know, five Island, the bar. So good money at it. I'm trying to find where I can uh, add a link here, but uh, Brian, you you, uh, you hit the nail on the head. Educating the customer, and it's something that you probably any of you guys have been to the Ron McDonald House projects. But uh, I'll bring up the example because it's fresh in my mind. But that job that I went and gave the estimate on uh, two days ago, and then doing this Friday, I started going through the guys or the, the couples. Uh, janitorial supplies for lack of a better term and yeah. look at their mops and their cleaning agents and you know asking what they're doing and i was kind of overwhelming the guy to where he immediately calls his wife and said honey can you come home right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's giving me all this information that oh, i don't wow. remember and this is all the stuff that you do right oh i'm stuck at work she's a nurse you know you can see him get all frustrated but he was, he was much pickier than her. He was the one really obsessing. And I'm trying to tell him, I go, look, I mean, it's only going to look a tiny bit different. You know, he's like, yeah, but that color is driving me nuts. That's not the color it should be. Right. But anyhow, I have a, a, a thing on my blog that shows the customer step-by-step -step, um, how to go about take, taking care of all these various surfaces. And equally as important, where to buy them online because uh, a lot of this stuff, you know, it's got to be bought. You're not going to find it at Home Depot or right. uh, Rite Aid kind of stuff. And the online sources that I show are so cheap, so ridiculously cheap, that they're just blown away by it all. And have a little video. And I'm actually, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned going to that tile store earlier today. I got a pretty cool granite piece of granite slab. I'll do another video. That's strictly for the customer, for the, for the do-it-yourselfer types that want to seal their own granite. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to do that if there's a husband there and he still has all 10 fingers, I, I would willingly gladly show them how to seal their granite every six months on average. So I was going to do a cool little video on how to test and see if it's you know ready to be sealed, needing sealed, yeah. and yeah. then how to do it. Uh, yeah. We do an yeah, absorption you know, test. Just, do an absorption test. If put water on the granite and it absorbs within five to 10 minutes, it's probably going to take one to two you know, darkens going to take one to two applications after 10 minutes to 15 minutes. If it darkens, it's probably one application. If it doesn't darken at all after 15 to 20 minutes, don't try to seal that countertop. You're going to be ripping your customer off and you're better off being honest with them and showing that you're ethical and saying your countertop doesn't need to be sealed. Yeah. And, uh, Michael Marcus, 
is on here making a few comments. Michael's a regular Mikey Porter smart ass, always giving me a hard time, but I really appreciate what Michael does. And he's one of those Vegas guys that uh, has gotten to that point in his career where he only needs to do, you know, maybe three or four jobs a week. Charges nice. top dollar, is a specialist, can afford to turn away, you know, pay in the butt jobs. Mm -hmm. And I'm certain he makes more than 95% of the carpet cleaners in there that stay twice as busy as him because yeah. he can talk the talk and he relates well to the customer. And uh, right. I meet face to face last time uh, we did the Vegas house, uh, whatever that was, February, March of last year. And yeah, you, you can tell he has what it, what it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one or two other guys in Vegas that are getting to that point. Um, both of which I'll probably be at this course too. And I, I'm guessing, not really guessing, I know this class is going to be a hit. And Brian, probably, Brian and I are probably going to have to take it on the road and do a, you know, an East Coast and maybe a, you know, a Southern region version of this. So a lot of these uh, demo areas and tools and whatnot that we, we're making are going to uh, be portable. So we can strap them to a pallet and ship them out to a, a retailer or somebody's nice rug shop or something where they have plenty of room to do this kind of thing. So, you know, if you can't make it to this one here in Vegas, we know it's, you know, it's not the best time of year to be going to classes September. Um, we'll probably end up doing this thing, uh, you know, maybe in the, in the winter months in different areas where you can afford to take some more time off because we realize three days is a bit of a commitment, especially if you want to go the experience and all of a sudden turns into a, a week long away from the business. So look for that in the future. Uh, look for different involvement from various uh, companies as they get more and more involved in offering tools and chemistry. And oh, like, and Mike, I like think uh, I think we should also say I think the IIC, IICRC oh. is going to issue CEC credits for this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. You will you will max out on their your yearly uh, needed allotment of that, right? And. You know, the IICRC has been kind of the hot topic on, on Mikey's board and Facebook lately. And there's some fresh new faces and uh, attitudes there that are embracing the, a course like this where, hell, six months ago, <laughs> if I had gone to them uh, asking them to sponsor something like this, you know, I would have been shot. Much needed yeah. and a uh, breath of fresh air is what it is. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some, a lot of exciting stuff going on there. And they they approve this course. And they are very much funding the, the a lot of this, the building of all these demo areas and supplying the room and virtually free and putting a lot of money out to put this on. And, and Brian nor I are, are certified IICRC instructors. That's never been done nope. before. So this is a very unique situation. Um, I think we're going to end up having to do this class for some of the IICRC instructors who want to add this to their their curriculum on the, whether it's the SMT stone masonry and tile or the the wood floor cleaning certification wherever that falls in, and then as well as area rug cleaning. You know, they don't. I don't think you can go to take an IICRC class and learn how to clean area rug in the house. It's all about implant cleaning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those of you who are on Mikey's board, you can see where we're dealing with a rug right now that, that bled on us in the process in a couple spots. And it's far cheaper to replace this rug than to, to bother fixing it. Um, and there's so many rugs like that out there now that are d disposable rugs. So, you know, uh, they still need to be cleaned once or twice before they get tossed out or used as a you know, garage floor ornament. But you better figure out how to clean rugs in the home for a reasonable price. Uh, or again, they're going to find someone else that does. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to send these rugs out for 4 or 5 $6 a foot cleanings when they only paid $2 a foot for the dang rug in the first place. So learn to do them properly, safely, and uh, you'll be able to stay pretty darn busy just doing cheap area rugs. I wanted to start a business in town. We only have a high end rug cleaning plants in town. I want to start when it says cheap garbage rug cleaning, you know, <laughs> <laughs> foot or something. Uh, Jared Swain. Thanks for your knowledge. You guys share good stuff. Have a beer. Yeah, I'm ready for a beer. 
So anyway, we've been on here for key gripes. Two hours fiddling with this thing. Be live. Hopefully I got it down and uh, everybody got to see it. I'm going to see if I can record this and put this on YouTube. Uh, if you missed any of it or all of it, go back and watch Mike, it. Mike, you, you, you want to tell them how to um, go and and purchase, uh, you know, get in the class at uh, Mikey's Fest events? Yeah. The drop well, down bar. Uh, was the big, our big unveil happened just what, yesterday, I think it was. Mikey'sFest.com. Can't be any easier than that. Hit the drop down um, on the events and find yeah. uh, find the hard surface. Yeah, with rugs. A link yep. there below. Um, there's three events on there currently right now. There's the the upcoming Nashville event that's uh, next month, and then the uh, the hard surface class, and then there's an individual sign up if you're only coming to the Ronald McDonald House in uh, Las Vegas. And that's more for the local guys or guys coming in for a, a day early for the experience. I want to come try the truck mounts um, and just come hang out with all your online cleaning nerd buddies. And then we have two more events planned for 2021, which will get on that site soon enough. But keep an eye, bookmark it. And it's the hopping happening spot these days. Good grief. And if you haven't looked at our Nashville event, we're going to be cleaning tons of hard surface there and lots of rugs and acres of a carpet and upholstery. And, man, it is the who, who's who of uh, carpet cleaning fest, events, group gatherings, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I think Brian's the only person in the industry that's not coming to this event. <laughs> I, I've got a class i got to teach, so yeah. that takes precedence. But uh, I, I'll be there in spirit, and I certainly wanted to be there. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, like missing them, that's for sure. It's sponsored by everybody, and everybody's coming, and I'm not sure how we're going to all fit in that room because uh, our, our our day of education is actually at the Ronald McDonald House this time, which is a, a very cool thing that uh, everyone will enjoy. It gives you a whole different vantage, of, vantage point of, of the Ronald McDonald Houses and how they work to be there when the families are there. Yeah, and very much let you appreciate everything that right. the charity and the organization. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a little caveat here. Um, so I just went through some advanced training for myself because I never stopped learning um, at the MB Stone uh, Care class in uh, by Stu Rosen in in uh, North Carolina, and one of the other students that was there with me was John McMillan from Franklin, Tennessee. That he was at the uh, at the Phoenix Ronald McDonald house there. And he introduced my, himself and he said, Hey man, it's good to see you again. And I said, Oh, I was busy that day. I, I don't remember. He goes, you were in the kitchen doing the uh, SGA on the backsplashes. He said, I was watching you do it. He says, that looks pretty cool. I'd like to learn more about it. So I told him about the event coming up uh, in Vegas. So, uh, but it, it's, it's just so cool how we, you know, get to meet each other multiple times during the year and we get to, you know, have a beer and uh, tell each other some tall tales and, uh, <laughs> and other assorted things and just have a great time. I, I just, I love Mikey's Fest events. I always have, man. It's just been an, ever since back when they started back in uh, uh, Santa, Santa Clar Clarita or wherever Santa, we started Santa it. Cruz. Santa, Cruz. Santa Cruz. Yeah. yeah. It's always yeah. been great, man. It's yeah. more than, it's more than just, an event, it's a happening. That's what I love about it. A family gathering. Yeah, that's it. That's Once it. you join the family, it's hard to leave. It is. They're very addictive events. No doubt. All right. It is lunchtime. I got to go. Um, Brian, thanks a ton for being patient and letting me figure out this goofy program. No and, problem. I got, your, I got your back. All right. So uh, all right. feel free to ask questions on Mikey'sFest.com or – PM me through the whatever Mikey's board or Facebook. And if you have any other questions, I can, I'll put my phone number down here. Cause I know a lot of people want to uh, make sure that this course is right for them. And more importantly, they are right for the course as we touched on earlier. Two, five, four, two, nine. You uh, can put, uh, you can put my uh, Facebook page in there too, Mike, if they want to reach out to me at B R Y A N Brian, Thompson, T-H-O-M-S-O-N, uh, 
Facebook, look me up and um, you can ask me questions more about uh, the class and what we're doing. So feel free to reach out. Yeah. Look, look up Brian on Facebook. And I'm not sure if that link worked there, but I've got this right. Stuff, right? Uh, yeah. But yeah, reach out to Brian too. And all right. Thanks everybody for logging in. Okay. Checking this out. And we'll talk to you all soon. See you soon. Yeah. Bye.